It's your boy Pule Jeffrey. I'm from Cameroon and I'm a Cameroonian film actor. And this is me on Face to Face, meeting the fans, meeting you. You're benefiting big time. You're benefiting big time from this. You're a very wicked. You will shut up your mouth. Has Mr. Paul ever tried to touch you or have sex with you by force? Speak. Paul, we heard something about you. And I just want to make sure that this is correct. Please, sit down, speak the truth. And shame the devil. Breach of trust, very sensitive, sensitive story. Um, got to me, I read it and I fell in love with it because it spoke about um, a taboo subject, incest, um, molest molestation of the girl child, especially in the family environment. It's a story of power where, you know, when uh, the man is in control, a lot of things, when, when you give man power, there, there's, just, there's just a lot that comes out of them. So I played the character <laughs> Paul. I'm actually um, a child molester and um, I just used it as a means to talk to people, to get this, um, these children, these little girls who are affected by these uncles, these, um, these fathers who oppress them sexually. I used this as a means to be their voice. A super movie, we had, um, we had to do this via the production of 3R Productions, which is of course with the, with the people who brought me here. And uh, we, had to, we had an incredible cast in Cameroon. The particularity of this movie is shot in two, two locations, two continents. Um, the UK and of course in Cameroon. Marvelous cast. The director on set one, Nelson Spike, did an incredible job. Back in Cameroon, we had um, um, Kanye Kwai on his directorial debut, and we had incredible actors from, from UK come over Suzanne Cabling, Mirabel Ade, um, Bron Joa. And um, back in Cameroon, you had myself, of course, the Pule Jeffrey, and you had um, Colonel Dixon Galam. Uh, you had Mwambo, um, you had um, other, 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 other real good talents that got together to put out this very, very um, sensitive yet a story that we had to talk about. So Breach of Trust is a movie that deals with trust issues, it deals with power, and it deals with a, with a subject that we need to get those voices that are unheard of out. They need to hear about this. I trust you. I know she will be well. Emos! Don't allow her to go out. No! 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 He could! I had, I had a, uh, how do they call it? How do they call it? A baptism of fire. I, my first movie, I actually did that in um, 2011 with Neba Lawrence. It's called Real Destination. My first scene, I, at that time, I just I freshly got in at a university. Um, I was reading um, uh, Droit Public in the University of Yaoundé 2 in Swa. And I, I'd, been, I'd been in the house for a couple of years. And um, I, I got proposed, you know, a role by Neba Lawrence. I didn't know jack about movie. Got to the set. For about six days, I, I didn't shoot. I just kept moving my bag, a, a whole big bag of, of costumes all over. And my first scene had to deal with um, Emeka Ike, the legend Emeka Ike. And at that time, Tonto Dike was the rising star of Africa. So I sat there and I saw these two great Nollywood actors walk into the set, dabbing them with powder and all that. I started sweating. So that's why I say um, I had a baptism of fire in movie. And from then on, I just fell in love with movies. and. It's been an incredible ride. Um, almost 40 to 50 movies later, here I am. I remember my first role and how, how I got it. I used to, when I get out of school, um, there's, this, um, there's this big brother of mine, Bayer Leonard. He used to be um, like the biggest radio host back then. I, I copied a lot from him. So I used to go around ho being the host of small, um, small school parties here and there. I think um, I went to one party, he was hosting that and a film director, Neba Lawrence, saw me there and he met me after the show and he was like, you talk great, could you talk like that in movies? And I said, I could try. And that's how I got my first role. And after that, um, a certain time with the daddy said, you could actually not, you know, use more of your voice, but there's still more about you in film that we could work on. And then I, 
I basically embraced it and took it as a career ever after. I left law and now I'm an actor. Trust Jasmine. It's like a mirror. Easily mended when it's broken, but the cracks never hide. I've not heard you sound like this in a long time, Steve. What's going on? Isn't it funny? How celebrities get wrecked by those they hold close to your hearts. The whisper in dark corners and smile and look they smile so big that it could devour their prey. Jasmine, you lie to me. And if you lie to me, you do not respect me. And if you do not respect me, then you do not love me, Jasmine. Jasmine, I'm going to ask you this question and you're going to give me definite answers. Take a look at that letter and tell me who's the man who's been sniffing on my soak of Yance's underwear. I remember one movie that actually pushed me to to actually start considering acting, not just not just um, as a career, but um, as um, trying to make a statement each time. The first time I had uh, the opportunity of working with another Nollywood legend, G Mike. A lot of people see the Raz crazy side of that guy, but he's a deep, very deep actor. Working with him on three projects actually revealed to me what what film and acting was actually about. He transformed me and I began to take acting very serious. I began to know that you don't have just to be the fanboy or the guy who has all the ladies. There are times when you have to challenge yourself to bring out a particular character. You gotta be sad if you have to be, or cry if you wanna, and uh, you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta just wanna just get out of your comfort zone to achieve a certain character. So yes, um, acting with Jemai changed me a lot. In a sense, to, to be compared to someone of that stature is always a good thing. Now, um, the challenge is remaining locked in that particular greed. If you get locked in it, then you don't progress. So that was, that was an ultimate challenge, trying to move over from the Jim Ike, the Jim Ike case. So um, every other character I played after meeting Jim, I worked extremely hard to try to shift myself, demarcate myself confidently, not as a Jim Ike mimic, but as a Pule Jeffrey. So yes, when you call me Jim Ike Jr., it is a compliment, but then the challenge in itself is trying to remember the name. A Pule Jeffrey as an actor, independent wise, yeah. But we are all different and unique in our own in our own ways. Um, I have a lot of respect for Jim Mike, no doubt. He's an incredible actor. Our basic difference should 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 borderline comes into the way we break down our characters and into the way the industry decides to inherit each one one actor. The, the, the industry decided to inherit Jim Mike as the bad boy, whatever character, but I think he's deeper and bigger than that. Um, the industry, as of now, is trying to inherit me as a much more sensitive, emotional, and um, versatile kind of actor. So I do roles sometimes that probably Jim won't touch, you know? That, that should be the basic difference. I'm trying to build an empire. I can't be seen hanging with somebody who doesn't incorporate what I represent. Market. I mean, you're the one with time on your hands. Go to the market yourself. What haven't I done to make this work? I want a husband who can take care of my needs. I run this house, literally. You nagged and, and, and pushed me into building this house, this project that I was not prepared for. If you do not like the money you have at hand or the money you're making, go out there, get a befitting job. In Cameroon, the basic difference is you have um, a country that's, the, that's a, the population of Lagos trying to fight over making a, making a market. So then you have the problem of English and French, of course. So the, I come from the English part where it's the minority and the French are the larger part. So doing good movies from the Anglophone part doesn't particularly break through to the French part. So those are the challenges of the Cameroonian movie in itself compared to Nollywood. Now about budget, movie is about money. You don't have money, you can't make a good movie. And so since they have the market and they can make money, we don't have the market. So our movies are pretty much very good, but not exposed. No market or very little market. That's the difference. Cameroon movie, Cameroon film industry and Cameroonian movies is the future. We are blessed with over 230 or 60 tribes, different ethnic backgrounds. 
Each and every one of these ethnic backgrounds have a different kind of culture and history. We, are, we remain a country, the stories of our countries are untapped, untouched. Um, once we begin to break through with the market and get recognition, Cameroon is going to be the number one in film. Five years from now, I, you, you, could, you could quote me on that. Movie, movie has no, defin, no, no, no um, definite language. You could watch a movie on mute and it will to get to you. You should be able to watch a movie on mute to get to you. So whether you shoot a movie in Uganda or you're shooting it in Rwanda or Cameroon or in Tunisia or in the UK or America, if you do not, if you do not get a good story, then you do not have a movie. So movie, movies are a universal language. It's like music. A good, a good song just speaks to you. A good movie, shot in Scotland, shot in, shot in Boya, is the same thing. We the victim. We have the power to forgive offenders, like he. Forgive our trespasses. I intend to, to pursue acting, pursue acting totally, because it's my first love. And um, uh, I intend to rake in the bonuses of acting, like, like getting get to, to, be, to be the voice of acting, acting or film has to, be, have to, he has to have a message. And um, if I could pick up Breach of Trust and be the voice of these girls that go through this, this pain, this molestation, not just girls who are violated, you have men who, you know, breach of trust is about just breaching trust. Breach of, breach of trust to me is more than a movie, it's about being a voice. So other than being an actor, I, I want to be a voice for, for those unheard troubles, those people in the dark who don't have, who are there whispering in pain. You know, to me, that's, that's a call. If, I, if I'm not acting, I should be there for other people. Of course, you can follow me on Instagram. It's a Pulet Jeffrey on Instagram. And on Facebook, it's a Pulet Jeffrey Jeff, no two. They pull it Jeffrey Jeff or on Instagram and on Snapchat is Jazzy Jeff. Follow me on those platforms and of course we're going to be having a lot and loads and loads of fun.